looking at two theories of intelligence here, Spearman's two-factor theory and Horn and Cattell's theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence. First of all, IQ tests generally are designed to measure how much you can learn predicts school success, but not necessarily success in the real world. An IQ score is supposed to look at your intelligence quotient, and this is done by putting your mental age and dividing it by your chronological age, and you get this IQ score. Some of the problems with this view of intelligence is problem selection. Who decides which types of problems are selected for these IQ tests? Who decides what form of problem solving is important? What uh, uh, form of thinking is important? Vocabulary. These types of tests are uh, highly dependent on your vocabulary, what you've been exposed to, and school-based types of knowledge and concepts, and the thinking strategies taught in school. And so, uh, psychometric measures are very limited in what they measure, and their predictive value in terms of success or achievement outside a school is limited. So, using that as a backdrop, let us look at Spearman's two-factor theory of intelligence. This still is a psychometric view, but it gives us a little bit more expansive uh, view of intelligence. British psychologist, this is when he lived, he said, he postulated, there are two aspects of intelligence. General intelligence, which he calls G, which is our general cognitive functioning, if you wanted to use a computer analogy, this would be the general processing power, memory or gigs or whatever of the computer unit. How information is processed, the strength of neural pathways, etc., etc. S, or specific intelligence, is intelligence related to specific uh, tasks or areas or types of thinking, such as math or music or tennis or whatever. General processing, but then this general processing is applied to specific areas. So intelligence um, utilizes both of these. He postulated that true intelligence, whatever that is, is related to this G, this general processing ability. There you see it, general and then some specific abilities. These are just examples. Horn and Kintel's uh, theory of fluid and crystallized intelligence. Fluid intelligence, somewhat related to G, is your general processing uh, ability again. And they found that your fluid intelligence, the ability to process information, etc., decreases with age. Our brains function less efficiently and effectively. But before you get in a state of despair, let me show you the upside of that. As fluid intelligence decreases, crystallized intelligence increases, and they more than offset each other. So crystallized intelligence is an accumulation of one's knowledge, but it related to uh, declarative knowledge, vocabulary, basic information, and concepts, but also procedures or skills or thinking strategies or patterns in recognition. This increases with age and more than compensates for any loss of fluid intelligence. And there you see another graph of that. As our fluid intelligence decreases, our crystallized intelligence, knowledge, strategies, concepts, vocabulary, increases. So, an application. In our schools, we need to teach thinking skills and strategies specifically. Thinking out loud. As well, we need to recognize and use expanded views of intelligence. Gardner, Sternberg, Goldman, and others. So we can teach students how to think in these various areas. This would be S, and thinking strategies would be crystallized intelligence.